Palestine to me is the starting point. It's where I came from. It's my heritage, my cultural starting point. It's people, it's land, uh, and it's a lot of injustice. For many, many, many years, we watched in, in the U.S. and in the West in general as the mainstream media have kind of uh, painted Palestinians uh, in a way that um, kind of dehumanized them. We want to educate the public about Palestinians. We want to do it through the, through the arts. My story as a Palestinian is not unique. It's that of millions of other people. I'm Faisal Saleh. I'm the founder and executive director of Palestine Museum US. I remember uh, Palestine in the 50s and 60s. I left in 1969, two years after the 67 war. There was a lot of anguish and over, you know, the loss of home and loss of land. When people left, they thought it was going to be like two, three weeks and everything is going to be settled and everybody would go back. But that hasn't happened and it's been 70 years. Originally, my family comes from a village called Salama, and our family had been there for generations. In 1948, they had to leave and um, they lost everything. In 69, I received a scholarship to come finish the last year of my high school um, in the U.S. I've been uh, in the U.S. for 49 years. In a way, I'm American and I, you know, I, I'm like any other American here. And, I work and pay taxes and socialize with people here and yet at the same time I'm able to relate the same way to Palestinians. And, and somewhere in, in the middle here there's some no man's land that's kind of troubling sometimes. The thought of uh, doing something for Palestine became in the forefront for me. I really wanted to do something since I had not done anything for a long time. I began a, an intensive effort to contact Palestinian art, artists in Palestine and around the world. And we had some office space that was vacant for a long time and it was really in bad condition. We decided to take some of that space and, and repurpose it for the museum. In June of 2017, I started work on this uh, project. We opened in April of this year. We are at the, at the Palestine Museum U.S. Uh, we are in the town of Woodbridge, Connecticut, uh, and we're about a two-hour train ride uh, from New York City. One of the biggest obstacles was is to get the art uh, to display. Like the majority of the art here is on loan from the artists. A lot of them came from Gaza, Gaza, some from Jordan, and uh, some from the U.S. also. So whatever there are Palestinians, and there are Palestinians everywhere. But uh, a significant number is from the West Bank and Gaza. It's difficult shipping from there. You still have to get it through the Israeli checkpoints and the borders. And, and sometimes it, it took like two months to get some, some shipment out of there. We have artists who work under extreme conditions, trying to show that despite all the negatives, all the obstacles, they're capable of producing masterpieces of work. It's a 100% Palestinian museum. It's all about Palestine and Palestinians, Palestinian ideas. Funded 100% by uh, Palestinian. Currently, I'm the uh, only uh, source of funding for the museum. Most people who come to the museum are coming from a distance. They're driving one hour, two hours, sometimes three hours to come here. For Palestinians, it's like a shrine. They come here and they tell us, uh, this is the only place that talks to us, and it's the only place that belongs to us. It's hard to find places where I'm represented, and I think that calling to the Palestine Museum made me prouder of who I am and who I will become. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm still connected to Palestine, even though I'm not there right now. I had a wonderful experience coming to this museum and getting to connect with a part of my history and past that I don't normally see. 
the idea of a Palestine museum in the U.S. made me so happy. When Palestinians and Americans uh, visit the museum, uh, they're really awed by what they see. They're awed by the photographs from the 1800s and 1900s. They're awed by the paintings. The drawings on, the, on that wall are from the children of Gaza uh, after the 2008-2009 attack by Israel on Gaza as part of treatment of the children, they were asked to draw what they saw, and uh, uh, this is some examples of some of the drawings that, that made it to the U.S. from there. We have artifacts like these clay pots that are more than 100 years old. That they, were, they were used in Palestine for storing olive oil. There's an installation there that, that shows an ammunition box full of rocks, and it really highlights the asymmetry of the conflict. There are some paintings that show the Holy Lands. What we've done here was successful, but it has a small reach given the physical location. We want to take this and branch it out to the 12 largest cities in the United States. And we want to do it over a couple of years. Our objective really is to change the discourse from talking about political conflict, talking about war, terrorism, to talk about uh, the human side of the Palestinians. We have the artists, we have the poets, we have the writers, we have the sculptors, and we're all, we are capable of excellence. It's, it's in your heart, you can't really forget it. I mean, you, every Palestinian, they have it in their heart. They're, they know what Palestine is, and they know how, how much of a wound that is. And they're, they're aching to, to, to do something about it.